All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's some interesting times coming up. I'm in drikpanchang.com from 30th of October. Rahu will enter the sign of Pisces, which is because Rahu is retrograde. So from 30 degree onwards, he'll be back, which means he will be in the fourth pada of Revati Nakshatra. And then uh, this transit will go on till 8th of July 2024. And on 8th of July 2024, Rahu will enter which nakshatra? Uttar Bhadra Pada. Right. So, uh, very interesting because uh, Revati is the last, uh, the, the last <laughs> of all the nakshatras, right? So, Revati is a very interesting nakshatra because it teaches us so many things like for example it teaches us of how to let go of certain things uh, if you go more into the details of the nakshatra you will see uh, that revati is uh, related to pusan okay pusan is basically the shepherd and now you can always see that revati uh, nakshatra people they are very much interested in adoptions uh, they are very much interested in healing. They are very much interested in leading, uh, natural, natural, uh, in trying out things naturally. Okay, so for example, we may see that when Rahu enters Revati, you know things like naturopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, and all this. You know, uh, of course, not all aspects of these, but uh, certain things which are actually natural, not just promoted as natural. You know, they they may actually. Uh, increase okay uh, now of course within these three domains uh, it could vary you know i'm not a medical expert but uh, yeah if there are actually natural stuff in this you know uh, so depending on the nature of the disease and other things uh, these areas might uh, actually improve in our life okay but then the question is what what will it do to us actually so will it uh, does it mean that we will run towards natural things uh, is it so simple? Is it so simplistic? Well, not necessarily. See, you have to understand what happens when a planet transits a particular nakshatra. When Rahu is transiting Revati, it will activate the traits of Revati in the style of Rahu. Which means there will be things coming out related to Revati Nakshatra, but in some unusual way. Maybe you can find Revati traits more in your, in some foreign land or uh, foreign for India, it's like Europe, America. For America, it's like India. And also in some foreign land, somewhere you find something which actually works for you. And this can also not just work in terms of health, it can work in terms of your profession also. Because uh, Revati is related to Pusan. So, uh, Revati Nakshatra is uh, very important for leaders. Because Pusan is the one who leads the sheep, right? So, therefore, whenever you are talking of Revati, uh, do not forget that you cannot become a good leader without the blessings of this Nakshatra. And therefore, if you see, this is the last Nakshatra where you have matured to such an extent that now you are able to guide others. You have traveled all the 27, uh, 28, including Abhijit Nakshatra, all the 27, 28 Nakshatras, and you have now reached the pinnacle. Okay, Revati Nakshatra is like the fruit which has ripened. And what happens when the fru fruit naturally ripens? It falls down. Okay. So very interesting nakshatra and there are certain things we'll discuss today. And as usual, if you're new, then please like, comment, share and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you like this video and watch it till the end, of course, and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any updates. All right. God is there with you, especially when Rahu will be in Revati. Just look to him and you will most likely find him. <laughs> And for consultations, you can go to my website down in the description section also. All right. So, Revati Nakshatra has to deal with... So, if you want to learn one thing about Revati, what is that? That word is give. Okay. So, if you want to harness this transit. Uh, so, November, December, January, February, March. It's very long till July. It's almost... How many? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, around eight, nine months, right? 
So if you want to harness this transit properly, then what you should learn is giving, okay? And then it depends on uh, where is Revati in your chart, in your Bhava chart, not in your Lagna chart. So for example, uh, if you are Vargo Lagna, then don't say Revati is in my uh, seventh house, okay? <clears throat> so you need to check, uh, depending on your ascendant, you know, where is in your Bhava chart, where is fourth Pada of Revati falling? And then of course, the third Pada, second Pada, first Pada like this, and as Rahu goes more and more retrograde. So you have to you have to see uh, depending on your bhava chart. So for example, let us assume that you know all the padas of Revati is in your uh, tenth house, and then it means that uh, now it is time for you uh, to take some leadership role in your profession. Why? 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 What? What is the reason? Because not just because you know you want some money or you want some name fame that now of course that will be there by default everybody wants that but that should not be your primary motivation especially when Rahu is in Rivati okay this means you know your motivation should be that you grow and the organization also grows okay so and also you know if Rahu is like transiting your seventh house you know if Rivati falls in your seventh house in your bhava chart uh, then it means, you know, you have to stand and take some leadership when it comes to your marriage. You know, maybe there are some issues in your married life which you need to actually sort. Okay, so if Revati is uh, falling in your Artha houses, then there is some some initiation or some, I won't say initiation, but some leadership you have to take in terms of your profession because the Artha houses deal with your profession, right? Second, sixth and especially the tenth house. And what I have also seen in my experience is you can also check where is Aquarius because Rahu is the co-lord of Aquarius with Saturn, right? So see where Aquarius is in your Bhava chart, you know, which house is uh, Aquarius. So uh, depending on that, uh, you can you can assume that Rahu is the lord of that house, okay? And Rahu is transiting in Pisces, okay? So... For example, you know, if Rahu is, uh, if Aquarius is your first house, okay, so that means Rahu is like your co Agna Lord along with Saturn. So then, and from Aquarius, uh, Pisces is the second house, right? So it will always be like the Lord of one house is transiting in the next house. It's like that, okay? So if Aquarius is your 10th house, then this transit is happening in your 11th house, okay? Very interesting. Because the second house deals with the uh, sustenance of a particular house, okay? So, uh, second house uh, from the 10th house is like the 11th house, which is sustenance of your career. So, if the 10th lord is transiting the 11th, you know, if your Aquarius is in the 10th house and it's transiting in Pisces, and then, uh, well, specifically in terms of your profession, you need to take some leadership, but Mm -hmm. This is not just within your profession. You will also have to take some leadership within some network or some circle or some club. Okay, that 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 is how it will work. So go to community events, network, and uh, yeah, do do it uh, in a way that you will be benefited and also others. And the more you do this, the more you will become mature. And the more you are mature, the more you will realize that others also want to give me something. It is not that just I have to give because everybody will feel this energy. Imagine everybody is giving. And also, whenever I talk of giving, I'm 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 very specific here. You know, giving just doesn't mean you just randomly keep giving things, you know, giving away free stuff. No, I'm not saying that. What I mean to say is whatever first fill your cup, okay. There's no cup here. <laughs> First fill your cup and then whatever is overflowing, that is what you are giving basically. So if you think, oh, uh, um, you know, Revati is in my 10th house and I'll just go and bluntly take some leadership role, you know, when I myself cannot do anything, how can I be a leader, right? Because uh, leadership, if you want to be a leader, you need confidence to take risks. 
but along with that you also need some knowledge and expertise right you need some uh, technical expertise competence is required so if you if you do not have com competence like you tell a person who is good at sports to go and you know write software programs even if he may be the best cricketer best footballer even then the person cannot be confident because confidence is a byproduct of uh, competence okay so if you if you do not have competence you will naturally lack confidence because you don't know what you should do right so if you have competence you know okay maybe in my past 10 years of experience i have dealt with these situations like this now maybe in this situation this is what i should do otherwise uh, you can't be so therefore when rahu is in revati uh, if you feel that uh, you are not able to take leadership roles, you are not able to go to that next level, you are not able to give things, then it means your own cup is not full. So this means you should actually fill your cup. And one of the best ways to fill your cup is, you know, by educating yourself and also by visiting a spiritual community. Because at the end, Jupiter rules Pisces, right? That is something which we should not forget. So... If Jupiter is ruling Pisces, then we need to take association of a guru, a spiritual community where we can read the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, where we can understand the higher truths, higher scriptural truths. You know, we can, uh, because see, Pisces is the last sign and among them, Revati is the last nakshatra. So it deals with like fructification. Uh, it's like the fulfillment of our desires. Okay. Or sublimation of our desires. One of the two basically. So either your desire is fulfilled and you are happy. Or your desire is not fulfilled and you leave it. Okay. So uh, this is very important. Because uh, in our life we will always have two areas. You know. One area is where our desire is fulfilled. And another area where our desire is not fulfilled. Okay. And there will be gray zones. Some percentage is fulfilled. Some percentage is not fulfilled. So. In such cases, you know, you, you will always have to decide. So if you have a particular desire and it is within the realm and the boundary of the Vedic scriptures, then you can fulfill it. Okay, you can try to fulfill it. Like, for example, you want to have company of the opposite sex. Okay, so you're unmarried. So then you go to the scriptures and you see, oh, Grihastha Ashram, Vivaha, Vivaha Yagya is allowed. Okay, uh, Vivaha Samskara, sorry. It's also a yagya. So <clears throat> uh, then you, okay, then you find, try to find somebody, you know, husband, wife, and then you get married. Uh, but then now if you are already married and your mind is tempting you, oh, maybe I like this person more than my spouse, you know. So then you check the scriptures. Is this allowed? Well, certainly not. Okay. In Kali Yuga, uh, it's not permitted. Permitted in the sense it's not Mm, advisable in Kali Yuga to do that because in Kali Yuga they say you know Kalo Pancham Vibarjayet five things are prohibited one of that is like uh, no the, the, sorry that is a shloka for a different reference but in general in Kali Yuga it is recommended that we follow Lord Ram like you know, Patni Vrat he took that right only one wife okay not not like you know two three four five whatever then it becomes like a circus basically <clears throat> okay so that's a recommendation of course but every uh, you know, religion and every government, they have different rules, you know, like uh, in uh, anyways, I, I won't go into that, you know, like specifically for cultures. But in general, it is recommended that we limit uh, our uh, desires for enjoyment to certain extent. OK, but then is it that you have to go to the forest and you can't marry? No, that is also not the case. You can marry. OK, uh, but one, not more than that. <laughs> so. Uh, Revati is a place where either your nakshat, either you are happy that something is fulfilled, or you understand, oh, this is not good, and this will not be in my best interest. Okay, so whenever scriptures are telling you something that this is good, this is bad for you, uh, their objective is not to uh, show some you know superiority or you know some rishi or some guru or some god is writing something you know if you don't follow this you will go to hell for eternity no that's not the objective the objective is that you keep a check on your animalistic tendencies okay so that is actually <clears throat> 
that is actually the reason why you will see there is so much restriction okay because certain things if you do not keep under control you fulfill it to some extent but then beyond that you have to keep it keep it uh, under control otherwise uh, we'll become like dogs right or maybe even worse than dogs like pigs <laughs> okay so whenever rahu is in revati we may be faced with these two uh, challenges you know either we fulfill a desire or we give up that desire okay and you will realize 99% of your desires that you have in your mind they are sinful desires which means they are not permissible right <laughs> so out of 100 maybe one or two desires you might have you know i i need a i i need a husband or a wife or i need a big house i need a big car you know i want name fame these are okay i mean these are legitimate desires you can fulfill them but then if you say oh i want to become a billionaire or by, by, by you know doing something wrong you know illegal or all then then that's not advisable okay so you will be faced with these uh two situations where you will be forced to make a decision okay so therefore it is very important you are in tune with the bhagavad gita and Srimad bhagavatam and also some guru in any spiritual community because the guru can actually uh, help you and try to uh, explain what is going on from the scriptures and not just information you know nowadays there are many websites where you can study the vedic scriptures um there is, uh, I think there's Gita GPT also, right? Where you can ask something and you can know what is going on, okay, in the Bhagavad Gita. But the problem with all this is they cannot replace a Guru Shishya Parampara because the Guru Shishya Parampara will actually tell you what from, from this thing in the Mahabharata or Ramayana or Gita or Bhagavatam, whatever it is, what should you do in your practical life? Okay. What is relevant for you? One-on-one, -on -one, direct mapping. Okay. Yudhishthir Maharaj did this. And in your situation, you should do this. Okay. Or it is like indirect mapping. Yudhishthir Maharaj did this. Lord Ram did this. Uh, Draupadi did this. Sita Devi had done this. Kunti did this. And you cannot do that. Because the yuga and the time is different, but in your situation, how should you, uh, how should you at least try to do something similar? Okay, so either it's direct mapping or indirect mapping. So, the, and depending on your level, okay, the guru knows your level. So, if you just read some scripture, you go to some website and read you can read uh, that's not bad you know it's good for starting but in the long run you will suffer because you will not get customized instructions okay and uh, the more you are away from it the more you will feel that uh, these scriptures are very they're too heavy or they're very boring you know you're just reading and you're not you don't know how to use deshkal patra and see what works for you okay so therefore <clears throat> You have to understand what is actually going on in the scriptures through the Guru Shishya Parampara. And then they will tell you, you know, okay, if this desire you have is, you can fulfill it or not. Okay. And then of course, you, the more you know, if you, if you know that, okay, this desire is something which I can fulfill, then um, do it, develop expertise and go and make that change in this world. Okay. And, uh, take leadership and uh, help others also get that. So the more you do this, uh, the more you will uh, feel that, yes, my life is successful, okay? You will feel like that fruit which has completely ripened, which is now about to fall, okay? All where? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please use this time properly. It's a very interesting time. Rahu, the planet of unusual things, you know, unpredictability is transiting in the last nakshatra, okay? Very interesting, excellent times. And there, by if you are new, then please like, comment, share and subscribe and hit the thumbs up if you made it till the end. <laughs> God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And for consultations, my website is down below. Thank you.